been thinking about trees and C++. And, you know, that's what I've been thinking about. And basically, I've done some research on the web, basically also where the title of this lightning talk comes from, because that was my first thing which I thought I should search for trees and C++ and see what the web seems to know about trees and C++. And um, there is a lot of trees and C++ on the web. And astonishingly, you mostly find binary trees. And most of them are like implemented as pointers, and you see a lot of new, and sometimes you see delete. And I was like, huh? That's really great when people search for such a basic term and they find all this rather nice code. But then I realized that people are not using search engines more anymore. They're asking chatbots, which are basically search engines, right? So ChatGPT um, also seems to have visited those websites and learned how to implement a binary tree. It seemed to have mostly learned from the sites which don't use delete. And so, you know, and you can see this critically, or you can see this where it's just a little program, and when the program ends, and the memory leak is gone anyways. Uh, Grok seems to be at least taking care of deleting things. And I've used it at Google Gemini, and it seems to pull it up when you ask programming questions. And I guess you all have various experiences with the various chatbots, because it seems to be a popular thing these days. And my general introduction and impression was these, whatever what you want to call them, chat agents, AI, intelligent, I don't know, um, were trained on the internet. And basically, you have now an interactive web search engine which can then give you uh, the wrong answer. Or, you know, um, sometimes you can ask them like where they have that from, or maybe they don't know that. Um, but it's not the point of this talk. So I've been thinking about data structures. And so there's area of structs which recently I've come across again. Um, and you use basically, you know, an, a struct with an array. That's, that's, that's the whole concept. It's not very complicated. Um, no, this is like at least since 2014 when there was a very nice keynote by Mike Ecton and Vittorio Romeo brought this up again this year in a keynote at CVPCon. And one particular idea stuck with me. Using an index where otherwise you might have used a pointer like in a binary tree. So you need some sort of container which uh, doesn't shrink, actually, or maybe it shouldn't grow is a better approach. Um, sometimes the R containers do the, the necessary thing by container design if you use keys. Uh, maybe use an allocator. Um, so this is a keynote I mentioned. And in this keynote, he comes up with this structure. In this case, it's an emitter, it's a vector, it's an optional. And that way, he can have this cake and eat it too. So um, he can just take the slice if he likes to and eat it. And if he has a new slice in the cake some time later, he can put it there. So basically, he emulates an allocator if you want to leave that. But that's just what he wrote, and that can be very fast. He showed that on stage. And I wondered what 
do we do with basic tree classes? And I was like, this is actually an, like an example to play around with that. Because actually I've been thinking also for other reasons about trees. And often we see that, you know, we have like a, a parent and children and then we use the unique pointer or a shared pointer. And an index-based approach looks very similar. And of course, this is not a binary tree, but if you want to have this as a binary tree, that's like not much complicated. Um, and that's like one of my own versions where I use a tree class in my, in my own, this is from my blog, uh, CMS. And back in the day, you didn't have variant in the standard, so you use boost variant. And um, you use the variant to hold the various types which are in the tree. And you have various visitor classes which visit the tree. So this is a more advanced version, basically. And my motivation for that was that I needed to have a shared pointer which holds the memory of the tree to uh, make sure that this is a pointer which is in memory, always on the same address. And in a binary tree, we have these as pointers. And yes, you could use a shared pointer here or a unique pointer. And instead of pointers, you might try an optional, but that wouldn't work because our type is incomplete in this case, if you uh, want to do that. You cannot reference like your own type in an optional because that type is in the part of the optional. Um, but an index, int left, right, slash so t left, right, is possible. You could also use an optional with size t because then you have, again, a null value. Um, if you use an integer for this simple test, you simply use minus one as a null value. And I wondered when I do this simple implementation, how does it perform against the naive implementation of a binary tree with new and delete? And yeah, that works. And now my next step, which I want to do is, um, I wonder how much of the difference we see here is actually true because the other structure we used is not very much optimized and we use here a structure which is very much optimized for cache friendliness. So years ago, I wrote a tool for unique pointers and that's basically my next exercise to write a test case and put that on a quick bench where basically the other type is not like using new and delete, but unique pointers which come from a pool and then see uh, how this measures up. So the initial result is not very surprising if you think about it, but I, I still wonder like how does it hold up when you also, you know, get to optimize the other side to make it a bit faster. How big is the difference then? Is there any difference? And I mentioned it at the end of Vittorio's keynote, John Lake has asked if we basically implement an allocator. So that's kind of an interesting field to think about. And yeah, I talked about unique pointer pool. So moving on.